Hey everybody, Fred here from plcgurus.net. So in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through the process of flashing down a ControlLogix uh, L61 processor. So this is not something that we typically do. Typically we find ourselves flashing the processor up in firmware versions uh, to support new hardware or to move the standards of our, our facility up to the next revision of the firmware. So in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna walk through the workflow necessary to actually flash a processor down. There may be reasons to do this. Uh, maybe they've introduced a bug into a later firmware and you need to flash it down uh, because you know the process was working properly with an older firmware. Or maybe you've received a machine into your facility and it's running a later firmware than you standardize on the rest of your plant. So it's a lot easier in that case to flash one processor down than it would be to flash all your other processors up. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna flash it down. I'm gonna walk you through that workflow and let's get started. Okay, so you can see here, I do have a 1756-L61 processor residing in slot zero of my chassis. And then right beside it, I also have a 1756-ENBT module that will allow me to go through and communicate to the processor via ethernet. Now we are downgrading the firmware here, so it's safe to assume that this kind of infrastructure is already set up in this, in this processor in that we'll be able to go through an ethernet channel in order to, to downgrade the firmware. Um, so you can see it's, IP address as it was scrolling across the screen there is 192.168.1.11 and we're going to configure that uh, ethernet driver in RS links in order to go through and communicate to that processor so that we can downgrade the firmware that's currently in there which is at version 20 and we head on over to the computer I'll show you how you can actually see that right from RS links so let's head on over there now Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is set up RS Links to communicate to that processor. So I'm going to head on over to RS Links, and I am running Windows 10 here, and we're going to launch RS Links. So I'm just going to drag that over, and let's launch the little RS Who browser here. And you can see I have no drivers currently configured, so let's fix that. I'm going to go to Communications, Configure Drivers, and I'm going to go to the Ethernet IP driver and click Add New. And notice I have a few different uh, NIC network interface cards in this machine, as well as some virtual adapters because I do run uh, virtual or VMware as well. However, the physical NIC that's connected right now to that Ethernet bridge is this guy right here. So the 192.168.1.240 is the local address of the NIC card that I'm going to use to talk to that Ethernet bridge, route through that Ethernet bridge, and get to my processor in order to downgrade that firmware. So I'm going to click Apply. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Close. And now I'm going to go ahead and browse that driver. And you can see right away the Ethernet bridge shows up, the 192.168.1.11. And if I expand that, you can see the black backplane. And now you can see the processor and the bridge there. So if I right click on the processor and go to device properties, you will see that the revision of that processor is version 20.015 and the device name is the L61. It's a revision B processor. And there's some other information that isn't really overly useful to us for what we want to do here today. So we know the, the revision of the processor is re revision B. And also the revision of the firmware is version 20. And we're going to go ahead to, out to the uh, Rockwell website, download a lower firmware version kit, and flash that processor down to that version. So let's go ahead and close this. And you know what? I'm just going to minimize this. And let's head on over to the Rockwell site. Okay, so I'm going to go to my web browser. I'm going to type in compatibility.rockwellautomation.com. I'm going to click Enter. And that's going to bring me to the compatibility and download site. So what you want to do here is on the left side, you'll see drivers and firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now I'm going to type in the search field, the catalog number of the processor, dash L61. And you can see here it shows up here. I'm going to select that. And we are running a version or series B like we saw in links over there just a minute ago. And now we need to decide which firmware package we actually want to download. So 
I don't know, let's go to version 19. It's just one revision lower than what we currently had. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the little downloads icon here. And we do wanna select the firmware for the L61 processor. And that's all we really need. So if we go to our basket, you can see there it is. It's gonna select 19.015. And let's go ahead and download that firmware now. So you will need to log into your account to do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and log into mine. If you don't have a Rockwell account, then obviously you, you need to set one up. And just type in your credentials. And I'm just gonna check this box to keep me signed in. And that will take you right to the validation page. Of course, your information is gonna all show up here. I'm gonna go accept. And I'm just gonna use the direct download option here. And I'm gonna select the uh, the package. The It's a self-extracting zip file, so I'm gonna download that. And we're gonna save that to the machine. Okay, so that looks like it downloaded successfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and head on over to the downloads folder now. And there we go, and there it is. So it's a self-extracting uh, zip file. So I'm gonna double click that. Or I should say RAR file or archive file. I'm gonna click extract. And there is the zip file now. And if you click on that, you can see that the control flash.msi uh, file is there. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click to extract that as well. So we're just gonna say extract to, that's fine. And now that that's extracted, we'll go in here and we'll run the control flash MSI file. And what that's gonna do, it's going to go ahead and install the firmware in control flash that we need and the tool that we use to flash these processors. So like I say, typically we flash these things up, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and flash this thing down. So it's gonna run through that installer, yes. So it looks like it's installed successfully, so I'm just gonna close that. And now it's launched the Control Flash uh, software itself. And this is the tool we're gonna use in order to flash the firmware. So I'm just gonna cancel this for now because I do wanna show you how you can access this Control Flash tool uh, a couple of different ways. So I'm just gonna cancel that, yes. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my search bar down here. I'm gonna type in Control Flash. So you can see it's a, it's a separate utility that it gets installed when you install your Rockwell software and you can launch it from here and it'll bring you there. But also, I'm gonna show you one more way you can access this. If you open up, I'm just gonna to go to my RSLogix 5000 software. And if you open up the software, you can access it here as well in the tools menu. So if you go tools, control flash, and there it is as well. So a couple of different ways to access the Control Flash uh, firmware upgrade downgrade software. Okay, so then what we wanna do here is click Next. And you'll wanna go through the list and select the type of processor or controller that you are using. So you can see here I'm using the L61, so I'm gonna choose the L61, but you're gonna choose whatever processor you have, okay? And there's a pretty comprehensive list here of the different types of controllers that Alan Bradley uh, offers. So I'm gonna click next. And now what we need to do is browse using this RS Who window to the, uh, the physical processor. So we're just gonna drill through the ethernet bridge through the backplane and then select the processor residing in slot number zero, which has something in it called test project right now. And I'm gonna click okay. So you can see here, I am running version 20 on this machine. However, if I check this box and you notice it's the only firmware version showing, I wanna show all the revisions, and there is the version 19 that we just installed. So I'm gonna choose that, and I'm gonna choose next. And, and you get a warning, so danger, the target module is about to be updated with new firmware. During the update, the module will be unable to perform its normal control functions. Uh, please make sure that all processes uh, affected by this equipment have been suspended, et cetera, et cetera. And to abort the firmware update, press cancel now. To begin the update, press cancel or press finish. Okay, so to to up to begin the update, we have to push the finish button, but we first have to 
uh, put the processor into program mode. Okay, so you can see the current version is 20. We're downgrading this to version 19. So let's head on over to the visual of the chassis itself. I'm gonna flip it into program mode and then I'm gonna choose finish here. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and flip the key switch on the processor itself over to program mode. And then we can initialize the firmware update, which is going to be the downgrade. Okay, so I've got my processor in program mode, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the finish button to be, initiate the, the transfer. So it says, are you sure you wanna begin the updating the target device? We're gonna choose yes. And now it's gonna start transmitting the blocks to the processor. So one thing you wanna be mindful of here is you don't want to interrupt this process at all because you could effectively brick the processor and it could be unrecoverable, it could be going in the garbage. So make sure you don't interrupt this process. So it's pulling for power up, so now it's gonna reboot the processor and load in the new firmware. And you can see the OK light is back on on the controller and it looks like everything updated correctly. And there we go, we get an update complete. We have the new revision of the firmware now installed and that's it. So I hope you found this video informative. Again, downgrading firmware is not something we typically do. Uh, I mean, it's rare cases that we need to do this. However, it is possible because I know there's a lot of things on the internet. Can you do this? Can you can you downgrade firmware from an older or a newer version? And I think we've answered that question. Yes, you can. Um, and this is the workflow or the process in order to do that. So I hope you found this video informative. Please do subscribe to our channel and click that like button and put a comment if you if you so choose. And head on over to our companion site at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. This is Fred. Thanks for watching.